Hello, here's a quick tour of Bridgehead and the way that it works with the head tracker. Let's assume you've already installed on a running Bridgehead. As soon as you plug the head tracker in, Bridgehead should just assume responsibility for it, and the head animation will tell you where the device is pointing. You can double click on the head at any time to zero yourself, or hold and drag the mouse over it to change from a rear view to a plan view or anywhere in between. The configuration panels open either above or below this main panel, depending on whether you place the window in the top or bottom half of your screen. Having fitted your head tracker to your headphones, the first thing to do is go to the head tracker settings window. The USB cord will be dangling either by your left ear or your right ear. The head tracker needs to know which of these is true, because otherwise it will pitch and roll in the wrong direction. Your tracker remembers how you last set this, so you don't have to tell it every time you reconnect. On top of the head tracker is a single electronic compass, and occasionally this will need to be recalibrated, particularly if some time has passed or you've just changed your set of headphones. Fortunately, this is a fairly straightforward task, and it's covered in another video. When it detects bad data, the head tracker will stop trying to use the compass anyway, regardless of the setting you've chosen here. The alternative to using the compass is slow central pull. Drift is corrected in this mode by assuming that you're usually facing somewhat forwards, and the virtual head is pulled gradually back to zero degrees of yaw as you use the head tracker. The pull makes a maximum difference of about 30 degrees a minute. You probably won't even notice it's on unless you have a big screen and your workflow causes you to concentrate intently on one corner of it for a while. Travel mode may be useful if you're trying to do monitoring in a moving vehicle. It applies a faster central correction. It won't attempt to correct quick or extreme head movements though. The gesture settings are experimental. Try them if you want and they may work for you and they may not. It depends how your head tracker is mounted. I'd recommend turning them off unless you really intend to use them. If you're using Elisa Studio or another third-party piece of software that interfaces directly with the head tracker, then well done. There are two advantages to using this kind of solution that speaks directly to the head tracker using MIDI. The first is that the bridge will introduce some delay, and you can do without that. And the second is that you'll know that the software you're using is designed for and tested with this head tracker. But it will mean that you don't need Bridgehead as a bridge to other applications, but to manage things like firmware updates, configuration and calibration. This is where the connection and app settings are useful. You can change the connection mode using this option here. A tick button will now appear when the head tracker is detected, and you'll have to click on it to connect manually. Clicking the tick again disconnects the unit. This is particularly useful in Windows where only one program at a time can use the head tracker as a MIDI device. Depending on how you use your software, you may want to keep Bridgehead running in the background all the time. Alternatively, you might intend to quit it when you shut the window. Here's where you choose, otherwise Bridgehead will hide quietly in the system tray in Windows, or the menu bar in macOS. If you can't seem to connect your head tracker to third-party software, do check that Bridgehead hasn't silently monopolised it, and be sure to change these options if that kind of thing is likely to get on your nerves. This bridge panel will be covered in a separate video about how to get started with different plugins. As I've said, it may be that you never need to use this at all. Here you can change the tracking rate to 100Hz. I don't know how useful this is likely to prove outside research, and I've never needed it. 50Hz is probably enough for anybody. Checking for updates is a manual operation, by the way. Click here, then here. This application doesn't phone home. Finally, there's a hidden panel that you can reach by clicking somewhere on the button grid and then holding down control. This is a subject of its own video. It's hidden because it can do disruptive things, so we keep it out of the way unless we really need it.